一，叮叮叮。Sleep Sheep by Carrie Lynn Sparrow and Guillaume Perrault. Duncan liked bedtime snacks and bedtime stories. He liked putting on his favorite pajamas. If there was bubblegum flavored toothpaste, Duncan even liked brushing his teeth. The only thing Duncan did not like about bedtime was going to sleep, and he would do anything he could to avoid it. Duncan was pretty sure he knew enough tricks to avoid going to sleep for the foreseeable future. What he didn't know was that his mom had a few tricks up her sleeve too. One night, Duncan found that his room was not quite as he had left it. Warmer pajamas, cooler pajamas, directions to bathroom, nightlight number one, granola bars with raisin, granola bar without raisin, glass of water, jug of water for refills, flashlight, long book, short book, box of tissues, nightlight number two, wool socks, cotton socks, extra blanket, extra pillow, fluffy, extra pillow, hard, seventeen cuddly toys. After his favorite bedtime story, Duncan's mom gave him a hug and a kiss and said. Sweet dreams, Duncan. But I need. But Duncan couldn't think of anything, because everything he could possibly need was right there in his room. But I'm not sleepy, Duncan wailed. Try counting sheep, his mom suggested, and closed the door. Duncan took a deep breath and tried to think sheepy thoughts. One. He whispered. To his surprise, a handsome sheep with a green number one on his side jumped right over his bed. Duncan rubbed his eyes. Two, another sheep, this one wearing a purple number two with a matching scarf, jumped over his bed. Duncan looked around his room and saw that one side was crowded with sheep. They all wore numbers like race cars. Counting sheep was going to be more interesting than Duncan had thought. He fluffed up his pillow, pulled his blanket, and continued. It was all going very well, and Duncan was even starting to feel a bit sleepy when he got to sixty-eight. Sixty-eight, said Duncan. Sheep sixty-eight stepped into position, and then hesitated. Duncan paused his counting and waited. He waited, and waited, and waited. Finally, he asked,、uh, "Is there a problem, number sixty-eight?" Sheep number sixty-eight cleared his throat. <clears throat> "It's just, well, do you think I could have a drink of water before I jump?" Duncan reached for the glass of water that his mom had left and passed it over to him. When sheep number sixty-eight had emptied the glass, Duncan said, "Ready?" Sheep number sixty-eight nodded. Sixty-eight, Duncan said, and then waited. He waited and waited and waited, but sheep number sixty-eight didn't jump. Is there something else you need? Duncan asked. It's just well, after all that water, I I really have to, you you know. Duncan sighed. The bathroom is down the hall. When Sheep sixty eight returned, Duncan fixed him with a determined stare and said, "Sixty eight." Again, nothing happened. Ah,、uh, what now? Duncan asked, exasperated. Well, I, I'm just, I'm just not sure. I'm quite ready to jump yet. Maybe, maybe you could have a few of the other sheep jump first. Maybe, maybe I could jump after sheep number seventy-two. Duncan stared at him. You want me to count sixty-seven, sixty-nine, seventy, seventy-one, seventy-two, sixty-eight? 
Sheep number 68 looked sheepish. I can't count like that, Duncan said. It's your turn to jump now. Sheep number 68 thought he would like a bit of a run at the bed. So the other sheep cleared a path for him. But he put on the brakes at the last second. Maybe you could use a step stool instead. No, he didn't feel comfortable about that. Maybe he should stretch first. Or perhaps borrow sheep number 23's running shoes. What if he took his socks off? No, no, no. What if he put his socks back on? It went on and on like this. And still, sheep number 68 would not jump. After drinking his third glass of water, sheep number 68's eyes started to droop. <sighs> Look, said Duncan, you're tired. He pointed to the other side of his bed. See how relaxed and comfortable those 67 sheep are? Why don't you just join them? Sheep number 68 yawned, heaved a big sigh, and finally made his way over to the other side of the bed. Sheep number 69, in his sleekest racing suit and extra springy sneakers, looked expectantly at Duncan. But Duncan was fast asleep. Who knew that bedtime could be so exhausting? The end. Time. Well, I hope you enjoyed that reading of Sleep Sheep. Uh, by Carrie Lynn Sparrow and Guillaume Perrault. Again, I apologize if I've gotten your name wrongs, names wrong or authors or illustrators' names wrong. I, I do apologize. Don't mean any offense. This was a fun little book uh, about uh, the little boy who's kind of learning his own lesson. The part that really stuck out to me, and maybe not to others, um, was just an early part in this book. Uh, that one line that said, "Her mo his mom knew some tricks too. Uh, and... It's something that I remember remembering as a kid, uh, myself, that, oh, I think I'm being clever. Oh, but my parents are pretty clever too, it turns out. And then now as a parent, I see that the other way too, that my kids, I can see, oh, they're trying to be clever. Oh, but I, I, I know what you're doing. And then I, I have solutions and we, we try to be clever too. Um, so this was a great, fun little read. Um, I, you know, um, I, I didn't really go the way that I was expecting. I thought it would be, you know, the sheep would show up and cause a big, uh, big chaos and cause all this problem. But uh, the sheep was just causing the same problems he was too. So it was a great little story and kind of related to his own problems. And he learned and then he ended up going to sleep. Um, so I wonder if uh, he still counts sheep every night. But I really enjoyed this book. Uh, let me know if you did as well. Let me know as well if there are any other authors or books uh, that you'd like to recommend for me, me to read. As always, I would love to hear from you. Uh, but until next episode, I have been Elvin. This has been e-reading. Thank you so much for watching. Be gentle and kind with one another. Bye now.